Okay, in these couple tutorials here, I'm going to show you how to bring in your own head and modify it to fit the rig that I've started for you. And that includes also changing the location of the animation controls and making sure that they are all connected properly. I've tried to go through and uh, reduce the amount of work that you need to do uh, to the bare minimum and keep it as straightforward as possible. So if we just have a quick look around our scene here, what we have is um, a series of joints. There's only a few of them. There's some basic neck joints. Uh, there's the shoulder root. There's neck 01, neck 02, and then the head control. This is really the, probably one of the most important joints. Uh, it sits right at the base of the skull where the uh, skull connects to the neck. It corresponds to a really important joint uh, slash bone in the body called the occipital condyle and uh, around this is where most of our head movement will actually occur. Branching off of that we have a few other joints. The one that goes straight up just goes all the way up here and it's just called head end. Nothing is really going to be uh, done with this joint. It's just there. It's kind of a standard rigging um, I guess trait, uh, and to always have an end joint. There is also um, another joint that comes up right to here, and that sits right at the uh, location where the, the mandible, the, the jaw, connects to the skull. Um, we don't bring the joints down like this, it's not necessary, we just go from here, and then we create an end joint for that as well, jaw end. Now, we also have two joints that go to the eyes, left eye joint and right eye joint. And currently those are set up to um, sit at the center of our eyeballs. Uh, if I go into the uh, wireframe view, you can see that they actually do sit right at the center of our eyeballs. And that's something we're going to have to look at uh, in a little bit if you are bringing in different eyeball geometry for some reason. Okay, um, I've also set up the basic controls for you. So there's the root control, which uh, will eventually control everything. Uh, that means move everything around. And then we have a series of neck controls. Uh, as you can see right now, these controls are not set up to do anything yet. Uh, and this is because uh, when you bring in your geometry, you might have to move some of these joints around to accommodate and therefore move some of these controls around. So we don't want to set them up yet until you have uh, made sure that everything in your scene uh, or I should say, make sure that all these joints match uh, your head geometry as much as possible. Uh, we have uh, some controls here for the mouth and for the jaw, for the eyes of course, um, eyelids, eyebrows. Uh, this one up here is going to be the main head control. And this guy right here has a whole bunch of connections that we can use to help to control our blend shapes. And you can see that there's a bunch of them. Uh, we probably won't end up using all of these, uh, but if you wanted to create a very complex and, um, you know, filled out uh, rig, comprehensive rig, then these are, you know, most of the blend shapes that you would actually need. So, uh, oh, and finally, uh, a couple here for the ears, depending on how we might decide to animate them. So it's a relatively simple rig as far as rigs can go for a head uh, and it's designed to be as straightforward as possible. So let's get into it. Let's look at what the first thing is that we need to do and really what that is is to bring in the uh, geometry uh, that you've created. So I have another head here that's not the same as this one. I'm just going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to go to the option box to make sure that uh, I am importing an OBJ sure that I have that selected and with that selected now I can make sure that single object is enabled and I'm going to um, import that. So um, I'm going to go in and I have a um, on here I'm just going to go to navigate to one of my uh, directories and that's going to go to this uh, Icarus head and open that up. Now um, the head that I have in here is uh, designed to be at real world scale and uh, as you can see, the head that I just brought in, the little Icarus head here, is uh, very small. And that has to do with the size that the head was at when we exported it from MakeHuman. So in order to make this, uh, make this work, 
um, what we need to do first is to take the pivot point, which you can see is way down here, and center it onto our character's head. That would be the first easy thing to do. Um, and what we can do to do that is have the head selected and go to Modify Center Pivot. I actually have a little key here uh, that I've already created, CP, which stands for Center Pivot. So from now on, whenever I want to use that, I'm just going to click on the CP um, button. So that now puts a pivot point right at the center there, and I want to scale this up. Now I know the value that I used on this head here to scale it up, uh, which was 12.316. I've made note of that. Uh, that's the difference between my um, that the heads that import, like the blend shapes for example, and the scale that the uh, base head is at. And it's really important that you keep track of this. So. Uh, I could just go in and try to just start scaling the head up in general. And uh, let's just uh, have a look at what we get when we do this. Keep scaling it up. I'm going to go into the four, uh, hit 4 on the keyboard to go into the wireframe view. And what I'm trying to do is to get um, the distance from the top of the head to the bottom of the jaw to match what I have here because it's actually this top to bottom distance that's probably the most consistent out of heads as opposed to the tip of the nose to the back of the skull. So top to bottom is more what we're looking for. So I can see that the top of the head is pretty close but the bottom of the jaw is a little bit off still so I keep finding kind of the right point. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. That's probably pretty good right about there. And um, the value that I have here is at 11.986. And if I were doing this, I'd probably just put it right to 12, just to make it really nice and simple. And therefore, um, if you find that this is the right value that fits your scene well, and it's going to be dependent on your skull and the way that you model it, um, make sure to write this value down uh, and, and keep it. You're going to need to use it on the scale X, Y, and Z uh, coordinates every time that you bring in another copy of either your base mesh or your blend shapes. So just write it down in your notebook somewhere and keep it. So if I were bringing in a, a different skull, a new skull, then what I'd want to do is uh, go ahead and hide uh, the my skull, <laughs> my, my original skull that I have in here, which is presently set to um, the head layer. So if I just come over to my channel box and come down to my display layers and I turn off the visibility for that head, actually, it's not. It should be, um, but uh, let's just say I have it selected here. Let's just make sure that it is added to that. So if I uh, click on head, right click on that, and choose Add Selected Objects, now when I turn that off, there we go, it disappears. And the reason why I want to do that is so that um, when I come in here, I can see just this head here and try to line it up. So at the moment, um, I have the visibility of the joints select, uh, I should say, I have the joints visible through the geometry, and that is by going to um, shading x-ray joints. And uh, if I wanted to go in here and make some changes, I'm going to want to make sure that the um, occipital condyle sits in the right location for the head, that the eyes, the eye joint sits in the right location for the eyes, and etc. Um, so just as a way to get started here, um, this was just the first, the very first thing to do with this tutorial. I'm going to stop right here, and then in the next tutorial, we're just going to look at, um, you know, how we would go about aligning these joints and um, and, and getting on our way.